There have been a lot of rumors around Mo Harkless and potentially going to the Los Angeles Lakers. All right, Mo Harkless would fit a need. Now, he's not a shooter. He shoots around, you know, 32% from three uh, for his career, but he is a big size wing. Uh, six seven without shoes, six nine with shoes, uh, but he has a seven one or a seven foot wingspan, and with that wingspan, he's able to guard multiple positions, uh, play you know uh, four three, uh, maybe even small ball five in certain matchups. You know, like if Draymond Green is playing the five, he can match up with Draymond, and it just gives you a big body and big size. Now, many people look at it and go, you know, hey, doesn't help the shooting issue. Who do we wave? What do we do? But the problem is, is that like. There aren't any like elite shooters that we could just go get for free. Uh, and anything like a Buddy Heel trade, for example, one, you don't get the defense, and two, you have to give up assets. And three, one shooter isn't going to save the day. You know, we need multiple shooters, we need multiple guys that can knock down the shot. Now, here's the thing though we do have a lot of guys that are around league average that just aren't shooting league average currently. We're shooting about 22% from three. Over the first two games, uh, we'll see what ends up happening in the in the Blazers game. Um, but as of right now, we're shooting 22%. Eventually, it's going to average out. You know, we have too many guys on this team that have decent shooting seasons and decent shooting careers. Like LeBron's 36%, Kendrick Nunn's 38%. You know, Patrick Beverly's shot 36% to even 38% on some seasons. Walker has shot 40% in seasons before. We're not going to be a 22% three-point shooting team the entire season. But the one thing that we won't have is a guy like Mo Harkless. And so I do see the value in him. I know some people are on the fence with it. Some people really want it to happen. Um, but per Shams, uh, it turns out that the Lakers interviewed and brought in Mo Harkless for a workout um, to just kind of gauge him and see if uh, he's a guy that they bring on to the ball club. Now, again, he's a guy that the Lakers had interest in, a guy that, you know, Lakers were at least looking at. Um, I don't know if they'll rush to sign him. I think we'll at least see what happens in the Blazers game. I think the Blazers game will be kind of telling as to what happens. And then from there, we'll kind of see where it goes. Uh, but, you know, Harkless is a guy that, again, guard multiple positions. He has a chemistry and a relationship with Patrick Beverly. They were on the Clippers together, and they were actually a pretty good defensive uh, tandem uh, when they were with the Clippers. And so he's a guy that is familiar with L.A. He's familiar with, you know, Patrick Beverly. He's familiar with the type of role that they would want him to do. He's not that old. You know, he's not 35. He's still, you know, 29, 30. So he's still young enough to kind of fit with what we're doing and be high pace, high energy. Um, he's a solid vet, and he's not going to do anything that's outside of his you know, outside of his pay grade, I guess, so to speak, you know, it's a, it's a low risk, high reward type player. If he can knock down, you know, 33, 34% around league average, you know, playing next to LeBron and Westbrook and Davis, like that's huge. Cause now you have a legit three and D guy. You got a guy that's shooting 30% or, you know, 34%, which is league average. And you get a guy that can also guard the big wings. Cause you got to keep in mind sooner or later, we're going to be in the playoffs, and sooner or later, we're going to play teams like the Clippers, you know, or like the Warriors with like an Andrew Wiggins stuff, and we need to be able to match up against those guys. We need to be able to have bodies that we can throw at the bigger players. Like even, even Denver, for example, right? The Nuggets, the way you kind of stop them is you wear the Joker down, and you throw big, you know, beefy guys at him, and you just have like three, four guys just hammering them the entire game. And eventually over a seven game series, he wears down. That's what happens pretty much every year. That's how we were able to stop him uh, when we won the, the championship in the bubble year, right? We were sending, you know, Howard and McGee and just everybody at him to kind of just wear him down over a series. And he ends up doing that. Uh, now, Harkless obviously isn't, you know, seven feet tall, but he does have a seven foot wingspan. He does have good size. He is big, physical, and strong. And it's about just throwing bodies. He's not going to be going one-on-one -on -one with them, but he's a guy that can come and be the help, you know, and give a hard foul and, and be physical uh, against, you know, some of these bigger guys. 
if we run into the Clippers, we need guys that can guard Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. You know, we need guys like that that can just, you know, be big and, and bulky. Again, you know, guard the the Morris and guys like that. You know, the, the Covingtons, the, the big, you know, type of wing type players. We need that. We need guys like him. Um, you know, and if we end up running into like Milwaukee, like he's a guy that could, you know, just physically stick with, with like a guy like Giannis, you're not, and again, you're not going to stop these guys, but you, the idea is to slow them down and you're not slowing them down with Patrick Beverly. (laughs) You're slowing them down with the guys like this. And if it, it just comes down to what are the Lakers willing to waive? Cause that's the thing. The Lakers would have to waive somebody in order to bring him in. And they would have to look at it as like, okay, Mo Harkless provides more than what our guys right now have, right? So for example, you know, winning Gabriel. Winning Gabriel is is a guy, you know, 6'9 in size. He's got good wingspan, good length, high energy, play the four, could play the five. He's a guy that can come in. But here's the thing. Winning Gabriel, uh, he's a guy that as great as he is energy-wise, him and Mo Harkless shoot about the same three point percentage, um, both around you know 32 33 percent. And as good as winning Gabriel is, he hasn't shown that he's able to play the three, he's more of like a four or a f- or, you know small ball five, which Harkless could play that same role. Also, um, winning Gabriel is a guy that you can play in spots, but you can't give him ample minutes like if winning Gabriel's playing 25 minutes a game 20 25 minutes a game it's probably because we're in trouble right it's just not gonna work he's a guy that you plug in you give him like 10 minutes a game and he's just high energy get going after the rebounds you know just being that hustle player that you know just high energy guy guy that's willing to do the dirty work and so Mo Harkless though is a guy that you can play 20 to 25 minutes because he provides so much and he's a veteran guy and he could play the three. You could play him at the four. You could play him at the five if you need him to. You know, he's got the wane span. He's got the same size. You know, he's not, he's a little smaller uh, height wise than winning Gabriel, but he makes up for it in just veteran savviness and size and just length and wane span. Um, all of that stuff is a key contributor to what they would try to do and you're you're again you're you're basically leaning in on the defensive end you're saying uh mo harkless is more versatile and much more of a necessity than winning gabriel's at least that's how i would perceive it if uh you know if they ended up um you know waving winning gabriel for a, a mo harkless right so the other option um besides winning gabriel is Matt Ryan, right? Matt Ryan is a guy that they brought in. Um, He's young too. And he's a guy that can, you know, sort of in a microwave, knock down shots, be be a reliable three-point shooter. Um, He hasn't really fallen into that yet, but it's been two games, hasn't gotten a ton of burn. Uh, You know, a lot of people want to see the Lakers kind of uh, run plays for him and make more spots for him. But again, one shooter is not going to save us. Matt Ryan could shoot 45%, 50% from three the entire season. Unless he's playing, you know, 48 minutes a game and shooting, you know, 43s a game by himself, he's not saving us. It's just, it's not going to happen. So do you keep the one shooter, move off a of winning Gabriel and, and bring in, you know, like a Mo Harkless. Mo Harkless, best way to, to put it, is like Mo Harkless would basically be our Stanley Johnson. They are very similar, very similar. And a lot of people wanted winning Gabriel gone over Stanley Johnson. Well, if you liked Stanley Johnson, well, then there you go with Mo Harkless. Um, and then you keep Matt Ryan and you still have that three-point shooter. And then you have the, you know, the the, the defensive stopper, so to speak. And, you know, you have that, I guess, combination. But... If they were to waive Matt Ryan, which the Lakers are going to have to make a decision, right? And the the only thinking that I could see for the Lakers and waving Matt Ryan is like, Matt Ryan's not ready and he's not going to save us. If he's not shooting lights out, he becomes unplayable. 
do we just fully embrace the defensive mindset that we have on this team? Because the Lakers are already really good defensively, right? From what we've seen the first two games, they look great defensively. So they could be looking at it as like, okay, like let's let's just full fledged embrace the defense. You know, if a trade comes up or something comes up that can save the day, then something comes up that could save the day. But right now, nothing's saving the day. Let's just fully lean into defense and trust that these guys will average out. Because if they average out and we're, you know, top one to two defense in the league, then we'll be good enough to, to win some games and maybe make some noise in the playoffs. That's how I could see the Lakers looking at it. Is like, let's just go, let's just go full defense, keep winning Gabriel. He's another big size wing that we could have. Play the four, play the five. Um, you know, and then we have Harkless that could play the the three and the four. There we go. Let's do that. So I could see that being their thinking and reasoning if they were to waive Matt Ryan. Um, not saying that they will. I mean, I think if if you were gonna waive anybody, I guess it'd be winning Gabriel. Um, just because, you know, winning Gabriel, Mo Harkless are kind of the same player. But I just think winning Gabriel at times, you, you, he's not a guy that you can consistently keep out there, right? He is a high energy guy, but he's like the, you know, he's like your, your JaVale McGee in a smaller sense, right? Uh, a guy that you put in there, you let him get, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, and he just, you know, is trying to just hustle out there, do the dirty work, stuff like that. Where Mo Harkless, he knows his role, he understands his role, he's going to play defense, he's going to guard, you know, the best player on the other team. Um, you you could literally, I mean, you could have, if you wanted to, again, embrace the defense. You could go like Westbrook, Walker, uh, Mo Harkless, LeBron, and Davis, and now you have probably one of the best defensive lineups in the league. Like you know, because LeBron was playing great defensively. Anthony Davis, we know what Anthony Davis could do. Mo Harkless is going to be you know your big brawly wing. Uh, Walker has great size. He's a six ten wingspan for his size. Uh, and so now you got length, you got size, like you got everything. You're the smallest guy on the court would be uh, Russell Westbrook, and Russell Westbrook is you know he's a he's a good size for a wing or for a point guard. Any he, and he, even Russell Westbrook has like a six eight wingspan or six seven wingspan or something like that. So I mean you're good as far as length and defense goes. So I could see that being a thing, but. Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. What do you think? Should the Lakers go and get Mo Harkless? Are you excited that the Lakers worked them out? I mean, we'll find out, I imagine, in, you know, maybe at some point this day uh, or within the next coming days. I do think that the Lakers at least let see what happens with the, uh, you know, with the, the Portland Trailblazer game. And I think, uh, depending on how that goes, I think, they'll make their decision. If they're like, yeah, we need some more defense, then I think that they'll they'll go and sign a guy like him, which is another thing because they have guys like Jeremy Grant, right? Big sized wing that they could use. They could use a guy like Mo Harkless to defend. Um, so it's just a thought. Uh, I do think, I, I personally wouldn't mind it. Again, I think it's a low risk, high reward type move, type player that could really help the team. I really do. I think he could help the team a lot. And we need some guys like him. Uh, would it be nice if he could shoot, you know, 36 to 38% from three? Sure. But if he could shoot 36, 38% from three, we wouldn't be able to get him. So, you know, take what you can get. And I, I just think at this point with the team we got, you just kind of got to lean into, into defense. You know, just lean fully into the defense. But those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, pass the question on to you. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. Uh, again, who would you waive? Matt Ryan, Wayne and Gabriel, who is it uh, that, that would go for uh, Mo Harkless? Or do you think the Lakers should just hard pass, just leave Mo Harkless alone, let it go? Uh, however you feel, good, bad, ugly, somewhere in between, let me know down in the comment section below.